Yo, 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 what's up, guys? We in Premiere Pro today, bringing that crazy energy with Flash FX. These Flash FX always stay trendy and super useful. Today, we cook up two different versions you can use in your edits. But before we dive in, let me quickly show you my Flash FX pack. It's loaded with crazy transitions and effects. It really speeds up your workflow, helps you make cleaner edits, and lets you stack up more projects and more money. Super easy to use. Copy paste the effect on top of your clips and you're good to go. If you want to grab it, the link's down below in the description. All right, let's get into it. You see how these flashes already look dope? The lights, the motion, all that energy. You can throw it on top of the beat to make your edit hit harder or slide it between clips and it works perfect as a transition. Now let's clear this out and build it from scratch together. First thing, we make an adjustment layer and drag it into the timeline. Cut it down to around 5 frames so it's nice and quick. Then head over to the effects panel, type in transform and drop it right on that layer. Now we start animating the scale to get that punchy flash look. Drop a keyframe at 100, then push it up to around 150 so it pops. And finally bring it back down to 100. That way it zooms in fast and settles back clean. But don't leave it stiff. Go into the keyframe options and add easy out on the first two, then easy in on the last one. That gives the motion a smoother flow. So first frame, we keep it clean at original. Then I jump one frame forward and push it down to about 625. Next frame, I move it even higher, around 755 so it really kicks. After that, one more frame forward and I drag it down hard, like 350. And then on the last frame, I just reset it back original so it lands perfectly. To smooth all that movement out, I hit easy in and easy out on the keyframes. Makes the shake flow way nicer. And last step here, I set the shutter angle to around 200 to bring in that smooth motion blur. Let's play it back. Damn, it already looks fire. You can feel the energy right away. Alright, now let's move on to the next effect. Go to the effects panel, search for brightness and contrast and drop it on the same adjustment layer. Alright guys, first we drop a keyframe on brightness at 0. Then we move a little forward on the timeline and push it up to 100. After that we go towards the end and bring it back down to 0 again so the flash fades out smooth. Now same thing with contrast. First frame stays at 0, then in the middle we raise it to about 50, and towards the end we drop it back down to 0. After setting all those keyframes, we need to smooth them out. So first, we take the beginning keyframes and set them to ease out. Then, the middle ones we switch to Bezier for that nice curve. And finally, the ending keyframes we make ease in. Yeah, we looks like this now. We go back to the effects panel and drop another transform on our layer. On the first frame, we leave the scale at 100, then a little forward, we push it up to 150, and towards the end, we bring it back down to 100 again. After setting the keyframes, first one ease out, the middle one busier, and the last one ease in. That makes the motion flow nice and natural. Alright guys, now we move on to the position. First frame, we keep it centered, then one frame forward, we push it a little to the right. Next frame, swing it over to the left, then again, move it back the other way just to give it that real shake vibe. And finally, on the last frame, we hit reset so it snaps back to the middle. After that, same smoothing, the first one we set to ease out, the middle ones to busier, and the last one to ease in. Let's play the scene back for a sec, and you can see it's already starting to take that crazy look. To make it even cleaner, we set the shutter angle to around 100. Now let's drop another brightness and contrast effect on top, but this time we keep it short for a quick light flash. First frame we leave brightness at 0, then move a bit forward and push it up to around 50, and towards the end we bring it back down to 0 again. For contrast we do the same thing, but a little softer. Start at 0, raise it to about 25 in the middle, and then drop it back to 0 at the end. After that, don't forget the smoothing. First keyframes ease out, middle ones busier, last ones ease in. That gives the flash a quick but smooth pop.
and that's pretty much all we add for this one. Now, if we hold Alt and drag the layer up, it makes a copy, so we get a double effect. Looks even crazier this way. I really like how it turns out. You can also drop it between two clips and use it as a transition. Works perfect. If your scene already has a lot of light and the highlights are blowing out, you can just turn off the last brightness and contrast we added. Keep it clean. And to go even wilder, I'm gonna throw in one of the overlays from my Flash FX pack underneath. That's another way to push the effect over the top. Aight, now that we got this one ready, let's move on to the next effect. Our next effect looks like this, kinda like a half screen flash vibe. To start, we make a new adjustment layer, drag it into the timeline and cut it down to about 5 frames, same as before. Then we go over to the effects panel, type in spherize and drop it right on that layer. Now we animate the spherize effect. On the very first frame, we leave the radius at 0. Then we move into the middle and push it up high, around 1250 so the whole frame bends. After a couple more frames, we drop another keyframe to hold it, and then just a few frames later we reset it back down to 0. After setting the radius, we also play with the center. Around the middle of the clip, we slide the center over to about 1300, so the sphere pulls off to the side. Then just one frame later, we hit the reset button to bring it straight back to normal. Same deal with the keyframes. The first one we set to ease out, the middle ones we put on busier, and the last one gets ease in. Next, we add the invert effect. On the very first frame we set it to 100, then we move one frame forward and drop it down to 0, so the full invert hits. After that, one frame later we drop another keyframe at 0 to keep it steady for a moment. And then one more frame forward we bring it back up to 100, so it fades back to the normal look. As always, we smooth it out, first keyframe goes ease out, middle one's busier, and the last one ease in. Now we add the brightness and contrast on top to give this invert flash more impact. First frame we keep both brightness and contrast at 0. Then as we move towards the middle, we push the brightness up to around 50, so the whole image pops with extra light. At the same time we raise the contrast to about 30, which makes the shadows deeper and the highlights sharper. Finally, towards the end, we bring both brightness and contrast back down to 0, so it smoothly fades out and returns to normal. Don't forget the smoothing. Now we drop on a new transform to give the effect some movement. First, on the very first frame, we set a keyframe for the position, keeping it centered. Then we move one frame forward and drag the clip slightly up and to the left, just by eye, no need for exact numbers. After that, we go one more frame forward and push it over to the right side, so it bounces across. Then another frame forward and we hit the reset button, bringing it back clean to the center. For the smoothing, same as always, first keyframe goes ease out, the ones in the middle set to bezier, and the final one to ease in. That way, the shake feels natural but still keeps that snappy energy. After the position, we go down to the scale. On the first frame, we leave it at 100 and drop a keyframe. Then a little further in, we push it up to around 150 so it pops out strong. After that, towards the end, we bring it back down to 100 again, closing all the gaps so it lands clean. And as always, we smooth it out. Now we throw on one more brightness and contrast effect to make this hit even harder. First we set the brightness. On the first frame it stays at 0, then in the middle we push it up to about 75, and towards the end we bring it back down to 0. After that we move to the contrast. Same idea. Start at 0, then in the middle raise it up to around 40, and finally drop it back down to 0 at the end. And of course we smooth all the keyframes. Alright guys, let's add one last transform to bring even more movement into the scene. First, we start with the scale. On the first frame it's 100, then a little forward we raise it to 150, and towards the end we bring it back down to 100 again. Now we move to the position. On the first frame we drop a keyframe, then one frame forward we push the scene slightly upward. After that, one more frame forward we drag it down a bit, just by eye, so it feels natural. And finally on the last frame, we hit the reset button to snap it back to the center. Same as always, we smooth the animation. 
Oh, and I almost forgot, let's fix the shutter angles. On the first transform, we set the shutter angle to around 200, so the motion blur comes in nice and strong. Then on the second transform, we keep it lighter, around 100, just enough to smooth it out without making it too blurry. This balance keeps the movement sharp. So yeah, you can leave the effect like this if you want, but I'm gonna go back and do it the way I showed you at the start with that half screen flash. For that, we head over to Opacity, grab the pen tool and draw a mask that covers half of the screen. Then we crank up the feather around 200 or so by eye until the edge looks smooth and blended. From here on, we can copy this layer as many times as we want and drop it wherever we need. But now let me show you something different. After duplicating the layer, we go into one of them and simply hit Mask Invert. Now the flash hits from the opposite side. And when you stack them back to back, one normal and one inverted, it looks super dope. Like the flashes are hitting from both directions. Alright guys, all these effects you just saw, and way more like them are all inside the Flash FX pack. It really speeds up your workflow, helps you make cleaner edits, and lets you stack up more projects and more money. The link is down below in the description, and I set the price super affordable so everybody can grab it. Hope you enjoyed this one. Drop your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.